In this video, we're going to talk about how to calculate some basic stats in Microsoft Excel. Now, if you want to follow along, a link to the sample file is in the video description. And also, there's a link to an Excel course if you're interested in that. Now, here's some of the stats that we're going to cover. The first is the mean, the average. Then we'll show the median, the middle value, as well as the mode, the most frequently occurring one. Now, these three stats are measures of central tendency. To help us understand sort of where the middle values or center points are in our data. We're also going to cover standard deviation and variance, which helps us understand how spread out our data is. So now we're going to go over to Microsoft Excel and demonstrate these. So in this data set, we're looking at the appraisal prices of homes. And we have three columns, the house age in years, the distance the house is to the nearest train station, and the house's appraised price for square foot. Let's look at that price per square foot column for right now. Let's say that we want to sum that up. We can type out equals sum. And then if we want all of the prices in that column, basically everything there, we can click on C up at the top and it's going to give us everything. We can also choose to sum a subset of the column that way, or we can select individual cells and use commas to separate them. So that format is going to be true for all of these stats we're going to talk about. But what we're going to do is, since we want the sum for the entire column, I'm going to click on C up above. And so the sum, or total, of prices per square foot is 3847.2. Now let's say we want the average, or the mean price per square foot. So we're going to type out equals average, and do the same thing. Click on C up above. And then I'll close my formula and hit enter. So the average or mean price per square foot is 76.94. Now let's try the median or the middle value. So you're probably going to be able to guess this, but it's equals median. And then I'll select C up above again to get the median value in this case, which is 78.10. Now let's look at the mode, the most frequent value. So we're going to type out equals mode and then select column C again, close it. And there's the most frequently occurring value, 44.2. Now let's look at the standard deviation, the variance, these measures of spread in our data. So for standard deviation, I'm gonna type equals STDV. And what you'll notice when you do that is a bunch of options appear for you. What we wanna choose is this second one, STDEV.S, the standard deviation of the sample. Now, typically we're working with sample data, most often we are, and so this is going to be the option we're going to use. Now, I'm going to select column C again to get the standard deviation of prices per square foot, and that's my result. And I'm going to do something similar for variance. I'm going to type equals VAR, and I see a bunch of options appear for me. I want VAR.S, the variation of the sample. And then I'll select column C again, close my parentheses and hit enter. Now, another way to generate some basic stats in Microsoft Excel is to use the data analysis tool pack, but it's not automatically available to you by default. You often have to add it in Microsoft Excel. I'm gonna show you how to do it in Windows, but if you're using a Mac, the link to how to do this is in the video description. So what I wanna do in Windows is go to File, and then click on Options, and I'm going to see my Excel options appear. I want to click on add-ins and then near the bottom, I'm going to see manage and I'm going to click on go. And now what I should see is for me, it's already enabled because I have it already in for you. It's probably not going to be that way. You want to make sure the analysis tool pack is checked just that one and then click. Okay. Now, when I go over to the data tab, what I should see is this new option appear data analysis. Now, one of the nice things about this, too, is you can select more than one column at the same time, and I'll demonstrate that. But let's click on Data Analysis. We should see this window appear. And what we want to select is Descriptive Statistics. I'll click on OK. And then I see this box appear where I have to select my input and so on. What I'm going to do is select this up arrow here. And then I'm going to select columns A through C at the same time and then use this down arrow to go back to my options. And what I want to make sure I designate in this case is that the labels are in the first row. So 
just so Excel knows that house age, right, that header is not a numeric value. It might throw an error if it's um, we don't designate that. And then I also want to make sure I have summary statistics checked. And then I'll go ahead and click OK. I'll leave all the other defaults the same. And I should see a new worksheet appear. What you're probably going to have to do is select the columns and all at the same time. And then if you scroll between A and B up at the top here, you should see this symbol appear. You want to double click that and it'll automatically expand the columns for you to the right width. And what you may need to do is zoom in to see this a little bit better. So I'll go ahead and do that. And it shows me for these three fields, all of the descriptive statistics, in addition to the ones that we just calculated. So using that data analysis tool pack can help you generate summary stats, not just for one column, but for several at the same time. Thanks for watching. Now, if you want the link to the sample file used in this video, it's down in the description, as well as a link to an Excel course if you're interested.